Good to have you back with us tonight. This is, I think, a very important story, and I want every American to understand how this will affect you. This is our infrastructure crumbling. This is our infrastructure being attacked by conservatives who think that privatizing everything is the best thing to do. Well, today, postal workers across the country took to the streets in an attempt to save the United States Postal Service. They are rallying, you see, in support of a House Resolution Bill 1351, which would help solve the Postal Service's budget problems, which was created by the Congress. Right now, 120,000 jobs are on the line because of a manufactured budget crisis. I'll explain. It all stems from a piece of legislation Republicans passed in 2006 in the lame duck session. Now hold it right there. What happened in 2006? Nancy Pelosi and here come the Democrats, right? Well, before she got the gavel, they just, you know, they wanted to just get after it. Before they lost control of the Congress, the GOP, well, they wanted to stick it to the workers one last time with the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act. The law forced the Postal Service to pre-fund, get this now, pre-fund, for years to come, decades to come, 75 years of pension and health care benefits in a 10-year window. That's a hell of a lot of money. It's an enormous, an enormous, unnecessary financial strain on the post office with more than $5.5 billion in payments per year. Now, hold it right there. Grab this. You're running a business, and somebody in Congress just passed a law saying, well, you have got to fork out another five and a half billion dollars to stay afloat because we're telling you that you have to fund your retirement and your pension for the next 75 years just to make sure that you guys know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> what business in America gets nailed like this by the Congress? Now, keep in mind, what was happening in 2006? Well, we had the wars going on and they were off budget, weren't they? You see, the Republicans, they didn't want to pay for the wars, but they wanted to stick it to the Postal Service, and they wanted to make sure that, oh, they're funded for 75 years out when it comes to retirement and health care. Hell, they were, they, they were funding employees before they even went to work for the post office. But Americans are fighting back. This is a TV commercial in support of the Postal Service. Here it is. The Postal Service is critical to our economy, delivering mail, medicine, and packages. Yet they're closing thousands of offices, slashing service, and want to lay off over 100,000 workers. The Postal Service is recording financial losses, but not for reasons you might think. The problem? A burden no other agency or company bears. A 2006 law that drains $5 billion a year from post office revenue, while the Postal Service is forced to overpay billions more into federal accounts. Congress created this problem, and Congress can fix it. Oh, yes, they can. Because of the 2006 legislation, the Postal Service may be forced right now to cut more than 100,000 jobs. Now, get this. The president's out on the road trying to create jobs and pass an American jobs bill. But, heck, we've got legislation on the table right now that's going to gut 120,000 jobs with an agency that makes money if you don't put a legislative harness on them. And let's also know that they're going to cancel Saturday service. They're going to be closing offices in rural America and destroying a great American tradition that started 235 years ago. You see, the United States Postal Service was created on July 26, 1775 by the original Tea Partiers. But today's Tea Party wants to eliminate it and turn the business over to the private sector because they can do it just a heck of a lot better. I don't think they can. And I don't think they understand exactly what's at stake here. Joining me now is Cliff Guffey. He's the president of the American Postal Workers Union. Mr. Guffey, good to have you with us tonight. Good it, to be with you. It, cor I, I need you to correct me on this if I'm wrong. And don't be afraid to correct me if I'm wrong. UPS and Federal Express has the Postal Service delivering 25% of their volume because the Postal Service will go places they won't go. Is that true? That's correct. Uh, we, uh, by mandate, uh, have to go to every door in the United States six days a week. And what of happens course, if you're not in those small towns? What's UPS and the private sector and Federal Express going to do then? 
I, I don't think they'll pick up the, uh, the additional cost. I think if anything happens to the Postal Service, the uh, more profitable areas of the country will be stripped away where someone can make billions of dollars and pay their workers very few dollars with low benefits and make a lot of money. And they're not going to do that in the okay. rural areas, so the federal government will be stuck with delivering the mail in these areas where really there's no money to be made. It's okay. just really total cost. It, it, it's, you got 574,000 employees, 120,000 could be gone because of this legislation. You want well, Americans to understand that this legislation needs to be reversed. Is that what the House bill is all about? Uh, the House bill uh, frees up money, the overages that the post office has paid into the federal government. Uh, it, it recognizes the fact that uh, we've overfunded our pension plans by 50 to 75 billion dollars, yeah. one of the pension plans. It recognizes another one is, is overfunded by 69 or 6.9 billion dollars. There's a lot of overages there and all the Postal Service and we want the Postal Service to be able to do is to move that money around to other accounts instead of being sit, sitting there uh, in retirement well, accounts. Well, it's a government takeover. I mean, right. the they, 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 I mean, the Republicans are out there talking about regulation, and they've laid one on the Postal Service that is just harnessing you big time, and now it's going to cost jobs, it's going to close facilities, it's going to hurt small businesses, it's going to hurt the disabled, it's going to hurt poor, it's going to hurt the middle class. Why? Uh, Why? Uh, I, I, I assume they just want to use that money for other purposes. If they gave that money back, and one of the main reasons they don't want to give that money back to the post office, and we're not saying just give it back in, in whole sums, but to allow them to use the credits for other areas, uh, yeah. is because if, if they took the money and, and credited it to other areas, it would show how underfunded the rest of the federal government is. In other words, all the uh, government agencies who are funded by tax dollars, sure. they get the tax dollars and they spend them, and, and they're not putting the money aside. And no for tax retailers. dollars fund the Postal Service. That's correct. Zero tax dollars. You know what this is going to do? This is going to hurt small town newspapers. This is going to hurt local journalism. This is going to hurt di direct mailers. This is going to hurt small businesses big time, the poor, the disabled. We don't care about anybody anymore in this country. Hell, it's all about making a dollar is what it is. And the all Republicans, right. while they were having the wars off budget, in the lame duck session of the Congress in 2006, this is what the Republicans stuck this country with. The beginning of the end. Would you call it the beginning of the end of the Postal uh, Service? If, they, if, this path, if it goes through the way with, uh, some of the congressmen want this to happen, and not the way we'd like for it to happen, it'll, it'll dismantle the Postal Service and have severe ramifications throughout the country. That pretty much says uh, it all. Let, let me government. tell you what, yep. one of the th things that we had rallies in 500 locations today. Uh, some of the areas we had 1,500 people, some areas 660, but 500 congressional districts. And we estimate that at a minimum, we had a minimum showing of 100 people, average, yeah. in these 500. That's well, 50,000 people. You had a great turnout, and I hope you do it again. And if the Democrats are listening tonight, just all of you get on board and tell the president to get on board with 1351. I mean, if you're out there talking about creating jobs and you're going to let them gut 120,000, come on. What, what are we doing here? Cliff and, Duffy, and 20, great. 25,000. 25,000 of those will be veterans, and right. we can't let that happen. Okay. Cliff Duffy, thanks for joining us tonight. I, I think I might do you. the story again. Michelle Bach.